Good morning. You know, we're talking about rewarding relationships for life and business. Hello, everyone. We are on a journey to uncover the secrets of living with favor. And favor is an acronym for the five key areas of growth that were present in my life over the last 40 years in business. I know I don't look it. I'm just kidding. Um, you know, favor stands for faith, abundance, vitality, overflow, and relationships. And I started this show to inspire and encourage the entrepreneur in all of us. My promise is that I will share wisdom and introduce you to expert guests. And sometimes I might share a bit of advice. You know, welcome to Living with Favor. I'm Lisa Mosby, your host. You know, it's really my pleasure to be able to fulfill my purpose to advise, train, and come alongside business women with simple solutions for life and business. This month, we're talking about relationships, and it's a really big theme to tackle. And uh, honestly, today's guest is a master. It's an honor and a pleasure for me to be able to introduce you to her. Um, please welcome Deborah Scamba. She is a marriage and relationship coach. Her business is called Heart to Heart Ministry and Coaching, and she works helping those who are ready to move forward in living without regrets and without overwhelm. Deborah, I know you've been married for a long time, and I didn't want to make the mistake of saying how many years. So <laughs> tell us how long you've been married, because I am in awe of that. My folks have been together over 60 years, and, um, and, and I know this is your area of expertise. So tell us a little bit more about yourself, and I want to know that number. How long have you been married? <laughs> Oh, Lisa, I just want to say thank you. I am thrilled to be here. I just think the world of you, and I'm so excited to see what God's going to do. Um, I am a therapist coach, which means I'm trained as a counselor, and I, do, I, I move forward with my clients. So they make goals for their marriage, for their relationships, for themselves. Because I, I, we talked a little bit before this that we really need to be whole. We need to show up whole, that we are not part of a half, we are a whole person and for whoever, you know, God has picked out for us. So I am married 40 years, 40 years to the same man. I call him my man and I love him more today than I did yesterday. But thank God that he loves me too, because I've given him this. He feels the same way because we really grew together and, and we could have grown apart too. And, but God. I didn't know back then all the stuff we were going through that God was bringing me for this, this time to help others with their marriages, with their relationships. So I believe in Christ centered, spirit led relationships. So that's yeah. what I do. Yeah. I do you have kids? I have two grown children, adult children, both married. Yeah. Um, one's on the West Coast and uh, they've been married 13 years this year, this month. And um, they have three of my five grandsons. So three of my grandsons live over there. And I have my son on this coast, not far from where I live. And he has two boys, my other two grandsons. I call them my joys. And um, they range from 12 to nine months. So, uh -huh. yeah. 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 yeah what a beautiful fun. life. Yeah. Beautiful life that you created and a beautiful, you know, business that comes from the heart that you get to share with people. You know, I, I always ask people like what one of those favor components kind of like resonates with their business. You know, there's always a theme with people's businesses. And I know yours is just re rewarding relationships. It's where this title came from. Yeah. What does yeah. that mean to you when you, you know, how would you define rewarding relationships? Yeah. So I think there's a few things, but I think I would first, um, define it as like a garden, right? And we are planted in a garden and um, in a blooming garden where love, trust, and happiness flourish. And I think that's so important, love, trust, and, and uh, happiness. Happiness is not just based on a moment. It's based on a moment that I feel like it's a little bit of heaven on earth, right? So, Trust is so important. Love is so important. And then mutual respect and support and understanding come kind of fill it up. So if you look at a garden deeply rooted and grounded in God's love, right? We have to always have our priorities, right? God first, then ourselves, and then each other, I believe. And then um, 
Yeah, so I would say a rewarding relationship would have that open and honest conversations. You share honestly and without judgment, your cares, your concerns. So I feel like all of this, you got to water it, right? Water with care and concern. And uh, But I think it's almost, I, I want to say the bedrock is empathy. Like it's not about you anymore. It's about, wow, let me understand you. So I think a rewarding uh, relationship is about understanding more than being understood. Is that? Yeah, yeah that I, interesting. I like that perspective of it, you know, understanding more than being understood because yeah. communication, when communication breaks down, that's when we see marriages fail. When we stop talking to each other, we start going internal, we holding it, holding inside, um, maybe because we're not being met with empathy and, and, you know, how, how we speak is not being received well or listened to deeply, you know, when we are listening to respond rather than listening to listen, letting that sit with us and then formulating our answer. You know, we don't need to know what we're going to say before the other person is finished speaking. That doesn't, that means we're not listening. So I totally get that. Right. The second one you listed, you said faith for or God first, and then the relationship with ourselves and then our significant other. And I want to dive deeper into that idea of our, our relationship with ourselves. When we think of relationships, we oftentimes don't think of that. That's not a topic that comes up. And so we talked about a couple of things, you know, um, I, I have them here, uh, the five love languages. And I know, I know we both grabbed them. <laughs> we have our favorite book, <laughs> Captivating. You know, in there, it talks about some of that relationship with yourself. Can you sh shed some light on your perspective of that? Why is the relationship with ourself important? And what does that look like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think for women, we have a tendency to put ourselves on the back burner. And I don't know, I... I always felt like I was to serve my family, serve and, and just be all I can for them. And I took the focus off of me. I became drained. I became resentful. I became overwhelmed. I had I had regrets and things like that. In the meantime, I absolutely loved my family. I loved being with my kids. I still do. I, of course, I love being with my husband. He kind of took the back burner too for a little bit. Yeah. But I realized that I was becoming the person that I didn't like. And I needed to look at that. So believe it or not, I, I, believe it or not God called me out of everything. At, and I didn't know why. But he actually was preparing me to be a counselor. But I needed to understand that I needed to be whole if I wanted to help others. So whether you're in business or you're, re, you're, because re, business is about relationships, right? And so when we, when we look at it like that way, and we realize like, we need to be all that we can be only if we take care of ourselves first. And God is the one that really does it. Like, yeah, God, yay, God, <laughs> yay, God, team God, you know? Yeah. And while it may seem a little uncomfortable, but that's where God works in us. And when we're uncomfortable, you know, God's working on us because he's changing us and only God can change us. No one else can change us. We can't we can't change another person, but we can change ourselves and be a catalyst of positive change in our relationship. So if we are we, we know our identity right? We now we have the confidence to, because we know who we are. We know what to say yes to. We have healthy boundaries. And um, and then we can now we can walk forward. Now we can step into our relationships and not be affected by other people's woundedness, but instead be empathetic and say, wow, Lord, how can I come alongside them? So that's kind of what you know, hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, when I looked at this book again, we we were talking about it in our conversation. We both kind of grabbed the book and I, and I, I flipped open and I, I wanted to share with what it says to some folks. Um, every woman was once a little girl and every little girl holds in her heart her most precious dreams. She longs to be swept up into romance, to play and 
um, an irreplaceable role in a great adventure to be the beauty of the story. Oh my gosh, doesn't that, that sounds amazing. But how many women actually get to pursue that? You know, many of us live a life where we settle for efficiency and duty and striving to do what we ought to do. I heard you you say that for a while you lost yourself, that it became about your family and it became about your children and doing the right thing and raising all of them. And we lost ourselves in that. We stopped being the beauty of our story. Yes. We stopped living the adventures and desires of our heart. You know, how do we get back to that? What are some steps that we as women need to be taking to get into better relationship with ourselves so that we can better serve. And I know for me, I, I, you know, scream from the rooftops. It needs to be, you need to have a business. You need to be somewhat able to take care of yourself financially because trauma happens. It happened to me. I lost my husband, my house, my friends, my, you know, my income, my business, all of that stuff went away. And, uh, and I found myself flailing in a world that, you know, didn't have a lot of compassion for a little while. And, and the struggle was real and it took a long time to get back, but I was secure in myself. And I don't know, you know, I meet a lot of people over the years that have not, they've gone through some similar traumas and, and really um, are having a hard time coming back from it. So can you speak to some of those things? I know that was a lot, like just <laughs> sometimes that happens, but pick one of those, uh, but, but you get the sense of where I'm coming from with this, like steps for us to, to get in relationship with ourselves, to find that confidence and courage um, and be prepared because life has roadblocks. <laughs> oh, they, it, it does. It does. And, and we should expect them really, because there's always going to be, you know, somebody, someone, you know, that, that doesn't see your dream and thinks they know better, right? But we need to be confident in knowing that we are unique, that we've been given a purpose by God, that he's equipped us for that, and that we, we can now move forward in that. So this book this changed my life. This is before I became a counselor. I read this three times. I read it with my daughter. She has her own copy of it. When you, when we step back and we step out and we, and we just sit still for a moment, for a moment, and we say, God, have all of me, all of it, have me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just listen to you right now. God always answers us. He always gives us that, that moment. So for me, when I started to realize that I had a calling on my life, right? I answered a calling that when I, when I read that same passage, I'm, I'm looking for, I probably have it highlighted too. It's like, I got in touch with those desires, those feelings that I kept stuffing down. Women, we stuff things down, and we, but emotions are are alive, so they come back up. We stuff them down. We stuff we stuff them with like addictions. We stuff it with food. We stuff it just because we're not ready to feel it. But then once we give our permission, ourselves permission to start feeling these things like yeah what is the big picture lord like what is it because i feel this i feel it and so god will reveal it to you so i think when you get like a book like like this that for me was a life changer um you get with, with people who are 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 wanting more of god to to be in on his path we get we surround ourselves with others because we're the sum of the four people we hang out with the most right so if you want to be successful if you hang around with three successful people you'll be the fourth if you want a successful marriage you want a marriage you want a relationship that that is what you've dreamed of hang out with other people that are living that dream you'll be the fourth isn't that like so beautiful so yeah. i I think that when we realize how unique we are, we got to stop comparing ourselves. I think social media has been great, but it's been it's it's thrown some women in a tizzy like, wow, why doesn't my life look like that? Well, because either they're airbrushed or they're, you know, they're, they're just taking a little moment. Right. I think when we become real with God and say, okay, God, this is me. He already knows. 
right? He knows we're not perfect, but he could fill us with his perfect love in our imperfect hearts. And we can move forward with that, knowing how much we're loved by God. That's beautiful. I love that you say airbrush because, you know, we do look at social media and think, you know, why isn't that my life? And it's like, that's not the plan for you. You know, if the door doesn't open, it's not your door. You can yes. look at that and say, and you can, you know, rather than having FOMO, fear of missing out, looking at that and go, you know what, I'm going to add that to my bucket list. If that's really what you aspire to, and that's part of your alignment with who you are and how you want to be and how you want to show up in the world, um, go, go ahead, pursue that, pursue your dreams. Um, but rather than looking at that with like, I can't have that, or I'm missing yes. out. So much yes. of that comes from within our mind and our heart. And um, and that's kind of what coaching does is we help you to discover, both of us do this, we help you to discover yes. your own dreams and desires and then help to put you on a path to achieve that. So don't worry about what's I happening mean, on social media, create it in your own life, right? Yes, live <laughs> your life, live yep. your life the way God intended. And you are gonna be like an inspiration to others. Others, Even yeah. You are an inspiration to other women. Oh, for other women so I'm so grateful that you're doing something like you have this format this this yeah. platform because yeah. you are touch, you're gonna you are and will touch many women with what you're doing so I'm so Thank grateful you. for that you mentioned that when uh when you decided to follow a calling that you had a calling on your life I hear you mention that word often when I when we're in conversation um what is that like how are you connected to a greater purpose can you can you dial it down like in a sentence or two what is the calling that you're following right now you know in this relationship arena yeah 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 so when i first started out well for years i was a weight watchers leader and i got to understand what it's like for people to set goals and then to meet them i helped women men meet their goals i loved it i saw i saw them come alive i saw them walk with like shoulders back they walk in the room and then if they you know like sharing their 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 um accomplishments yeah. you know their positive things i love that so when i started to do that i realized like okay i like this doing this a lot but god called me out of it and i had to wait until i heard from my husband that there was a, a, a counseling program, a degree at a local college. He goes, Deb, I think you would be great at being a counselor. First, I, this, is, this is how you know it's a calling, right? First, I said, I'm too old to go back to college because my youngest was going off to college. I'm too old for that. And then I talked about with a few friends. And, 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 and they were the ones that saw me talking heart to heart with other women. And I went to them. I said, I think, I think my husband thinks I should go back to be a counselor, go to school to be a counselor. Well, they said, yes, yes. So confirmation. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do. All I knew was like, before I did that, I, in two weeks, I was sitting in a classroom. So a calling, you doesn't really need your help it's already on you you it just needs to be brought out and then once it does you know it's it's for you because it happened mine happened in two weeks I waited for it for a while it didn't happen overnight but I was open to hear from God and I trusted my husband I trusted these friends they were a part of a prayer group I was in I already heard that I was going to be talking heart to heart God was revealing these things to me and so a calling is when you're out of your comfort zone but you feel comfortable in it because of the gifting. So that brought out all the things that I had before. I had all this before. I just didn't use it in a way that would, with the training, it, I was able now to move forward in, how do you want to say this? Like um, uh, a path that, that, uh, a positive path. I can't think of another one, but I knew this is good. And I knew that those obstacles in my way, in my way that were in my way before now they're stepping stones. So my past was my past, but it got me to where I am today. And then today is where I help others knowing what I know to move also myself and others forward. So yes. a calling is beyond you. It's beyond you, but it's comfortable. 
in, you're comfortable in the uncomfortable. There, there's several things I want to unpack, unpack about what you said. Um, when you mentioned that we get confirmation, you know, one, we need to listen. Um, so there's something in every life of every woman, man or woman who's watching this show, that is a gift. It, it's like those gifts that have been given to you that make you an expert, whether it's your life experiences, your education, your upbringing, um, you know, something um, in all of us is a gift that we can share with the world. It's something that makes you an expert in that experience. And I do talk about about that oftentimes on this show is what is it in your life that makes you an expert that you need to be the voice, the hands and the feet, you need to be the voice that shares that with the world. How can you help? For me, walking through that experience of being 50 years old and starting over. I mean, I started over and I did great. I had a great life. It was magical. And, and, and I became, you know, quite talented at doing, you know, starting businesses and, and being successful at that. And I also had failures, but, and that's where you learn. Um, but I, but I had a lot of success. And so starting over at 50, though, it was even, it was even more scary doing it later in life, that history that Mm -hmm. I had gave me the experience to be an expert, to do this. And now I get to teach people like it moved me into the calling of my life because I was listening. So I love how beautifully you shared that, how you, how you kind of broke those pieces apart. And, uh, and, and if we listen and we follow and we take action and, and we do that, even when we're uncomfortable, that the next step will appear. It's almost like the yellow brick road, but you don't see the next brick until you take the last step. Like the next brick will appear. If you keep moving forward, you don't see the whole road when you first start. Um, That's true. Trust, that yeah. is so good. Absolutely. Oh, I'm so like fired up. This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have some wisdom, wisdom that you can share about being an entrepreneur, you know, stepping into, uh, you stepped into the coaching and stuff, but, but there was more than, than being um, a therapist and being a coach, like this whole other side of entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, not working for somebody else. Um, and, and, being an entrepreneur and being in business, like, do you have some wisdom, maybe how to overcome the fears or the anxiety and then wisdom that has helped you to continue to pursue this? Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think this is even at the core of where who you are too. I think that because of what we've been through, God. God's given us an opportunity to share with others how we can help them to move forward, right? So I would say, one, believe in yourself. Um, And if you feel, if if your first thought was like, no, like, or like a negative feeling, that that's a belief that you have about yourself and to pull it out. And, and take it out of your belief system because you have already been equipped with everything you need for the purpose God has given you. So if you say no first to like um, anything, then you got to look at that no and see why why is that? So we do have healthy boundaries. We already know what we can say yes to, what we can say no to. But when God calls you and wants, or you you you're in this place, you feel like you you you're doing what God has called you to do. We need to be still enough to hear from God first, right? And then when we hear from God first, when we have these lies that says, oh, you're not enough, we could say, no, that's not from you, God, because you've already told me, right? So we need to have that relationship with God, that open relationship, and then with ourselves to be open and honest with ourselves. Listen, I've been called out on things and I did not like it, but let me let me tell you, I needed to look at it and I realized, okay, God, this is this is from you to me to say, now let's like you are, I want to say you are not believing me. God says, you're not believing me. And I needed to get someone else to tell you that. So have godly friends, godly counsel around you, be in a group with other people that are successful, maybe even better than you learn from them. Don't compare yourself to them, but learn from them. I put myself in that situation all the time. I'm a pretty strong-willed person. I don't know if you know what I'm saying yet, Lisa, or not. But God had to work on me on that because I needed to listen more in my marriage, 
in my relationship with my children, everything. I have five grandsons and I am practicing listening to them all the time because I just love hearing what they have to say. Anyway, so I would say be in relationship with the Lord, with God, be still enough to hear his voice. Listen first. Don't tell him what to do. Listen and then move forward in that knowing you are unique. You have a plan. God's equipped you for it and pull out the lies, right? That say you can't do this. If we feel like we need to pivot, pivoting, all that is, is listening. So pivot, like pivot. If you feel like, oh, this is not working, then pivot, stop, listen, and then move. And then see, it's probably the same path, but maybe what we're doing is thinking that we need to be heard when actually we need to listen to our clients. This is, right? So that would be my my advice that I follow myself, like pivot, stop, talk, uh, listen, and then move forward, right? So. What's up? We have only a couple minutes left, but I'm wondering if there's one um, aha from starting your own business. Like when you started working for yourself, uh, how did that make you feel? If you can you give us a kind of a, a brief answer on like, what was the, the outcome? What's the benefit of it? You know, I want to give words of hope and encouragement to anyone who hasn't done this yet or who may be struggling in their business to, to keep going, to persist. That God can use me. That okay. in all of my background, oh, I am not the mistakes I made. I'm none of that. God doesn't see that. He just looks for a yielded heart, obedience. So I would say that in as a counselor, marriage counselor, um, pre-engagement counselor, coaching, that because my heart was ready to receive from God, because I let him do what he needed to do in me so that he could work through me, I would say that to um persevere to endure i guess yeah. i lost my train of thought because all of a sudden like i was brought back to that oh my aha moment that god could use me but he wants you to to, to endure what he has to because he's always perfecting us right just to be willing to do that so my aha moment is that i don't have to know everything i do need to be trained but that it's it god shows up each and every time and then I see a lot of people's lives change. So seeing people's lives change, women walk, be more confident and, and not and and not and kicking regret and being overwhelmed to the curb. I love that. I just love that. I live for that. And I think you do too. Like, like, yeah, God, let's get them strong. Let's get them like ready for what you have for them. Like, let's just kick this ugliness to the curb. We're not talking husbands. We're talking regrets and being overwhelmed, but let it just happen, Lord. Like, I just love that. I love that. I could, I could actually, I, I have a prophetic gift that says I could see like even what your calling is. Like I could see once I spend some time with you, I can actually kind of think about what it is. And then I just hope to call that out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. I, that that's a lot, a lot for you all to handle. I know, uh, but go back and re listen to this, you know, listen to the wisdom of this master at relationships, both with ourselves, our relationship with a higher power, with your God, with our God, um, mm -hmm. a, a relationship with your family and friends. You know, how are you showing up in your relationships? Are you listening? Are you being persistent? Are you enduring all of these beautiful phrases that Debbie has shared with us? today. I want to thank you so much for being my guest today. If you want to get in touch with Debbie, if you want to learn more about her, she has on the screen, you'll notice her website there. It's H to coaching.com. That's the letter H the number two coaching.com. And you can connect with her there. Yeah. There's Final another, H, there's another H in there. H to H coaching, but my apologies, yeah. H2H oh, coaching, H2H, and that's H, the letter H, the number H, or the number two, and the letter H coaching.com. And that'll be in the show notes too, if you don't see it. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. Love you, Lisa. Love yeah. you. Bless you. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.
Yeah. So for my audience, you know, I want you to actually both of us want you to experience joy and personal fulfillment in your work. You know, my team and I work to support business owners with simple solutions. As I mentioned, if you could use a bit of advice in starting your business or up leveling your business, if you're looking for affordable solutions, you know, to create a digital marketing plan to generate leads for your business, any way that we can help you to build and grow and um, get more confident in um, being an entrepreneur, I want you to reach out and book time. You can go to lisamosby.com. That's Lisa M O S B E Y.com and just click book time with me. We'll chat about your business, the direction of it. Um, give me 30 minutes and I will give you some insight and um, hopefully a little bit of hope uh, to keep going and be persistent. Um, thanks for tuning in and sharing our, uh, sharing our show with your friends. Uh, again, I'm Lisa Mosby, your host, and I look forward to seeing you all next week for a little bit of advice. Thank you so much for joining us.